Hello, my viewer, and thank you very much for joining me once again. This is Kureyatu TV, and as always, my name is Daniel Love. And today, being the 31st of March 2022, has been the D-Day for the BBI report ruling, added by the Chief Justice Martha Koome and other Supreme Court judges, and this is what they had to say according to their verdict. And this was the verdict for the Chief Justice Martha Koome. Basic structure not applicable, President not permitted to initiate constitutional amendment through popular initiative. Second schedule on creation of new constituencies was unconstitutional. Civil proceedings cannot be instituted against the president during his tenure. There was a public participation on the BBI bill, save for schedule 2 of the bill. IBC was legally constituted with the three commissioners. Multiple referendum questions not ripe for the determination. This was the verdict for Justice Smoking Wanjala. Basic structure doctrine is not applicable in Kenya. The president cannot initiate or activate any constitutional change through popular initiative. The second schedule in the BBI bill on creation of new constituencies is inconsistent with the constitution. Civil proceedings cannot be instituted against the president while in office. Promoters of BBI did not conduct meaningful public participation. IBC was constitutionally constituted. On the matter of referendum questions, this matter was not ripe for determination. This was the verdict for Justice Isaac Lenaola. Basic structure doctrine not applicable in Kenya hasn't gained global acceptance. The president cannot initiate a popular initiative and in this case he did not initiate it. Proposal on creation of 70 new constituencies was unconstitutional. The president is immune from civil proceeding during his tenure. There was reasonable public participation. IBC was accurate and constituted to undertake its function. On the matter of referendum, question or questions, it is premature. This was the verdict for Justice Njoki Ndongo. Basic structure is not applicable in Kenya. There is no such as eternal clauses in the constitution. The president was not the promoter of BBI bill and the popular initiative. The bill on the second schedule had not been enacted into law, as the law can't express itself in the creation of new constituencies. In appointing the BBI secretariat, the president was discharging his constitutional mandate and therefore nothing to charge him about. I disagree that the president can be held liable. Promoters are not under any obligation to conduct public participation. No public participation is needed for the collection of signatures. I disagree with the Court of Appeal. I disagree that there was no public participation in the BBI process. IBC was legally constituted with three commissioners. On referendum questions, one question was sufficient. And lastly, this is the verdict of Justice William Ouko. Basic structure is not applicable to Kenyan constitution. President is ineligible to directly or indirectly initiate a constitutional amendment process through popular initiative. The second schedule in the BBI bill on creation of new constituencies is inconsistent with the constitution. The High Court and Court of Appeal erred by arriving at the conclusion that civil proceeding can be instituted against the president during the tenure of office. There was sufficient evidence that there were public participation, except on the second schedule of the bill. IBC was legally constituted with three commissioners. Do you think that the BBI being ruled null and void is a big blow to Raila Molo Odinga and his chief campaigner Uru Kenyatta? Or is it a win to the UDA party leader Dr. William Ruto? And on the comment section as a Kenyan, what's your take or what's your view? on the BBI being ruled null and void. Kindly don't forget to share, like, and most importantly, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I've been your host, Daniel Lovi. Thank you.